Julia from 90 Day Fiance finds out the results to her pregnancy test. Guys, I don't want to waste any time, but all season we've been waiting and seeing and seeing that Julia took a test, a good old pregnancy test, and we're waiting, waiting, waiting on the verdict. Well, we can now exclusively say, thanks to InTouch Weekly, we know the result. And this is what InTouch had to say. They said, boom, right there, spoiler alert. Brandy and Julia were teasing all season long, blah, 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 blah. And she took a pregnancy test, and the test was negative. We have been waiting all season. We have seen seen the clips of them taking the test. Julia, if you don't already know, in the next episode, she's been extremely sick, which I don't get from what? Maybe food poisoning? Not really sure. But she's been super freaking sick. And I mean, we all know how Brandon and Julia, you know, protect themselves downstairs and they do God knows what and over in his bedroom. And so I figured, oh, she has to be pregnant. There's no way she's not pregnant because they're doing a lot of stuff together. And so I thought for sure, but I was scrolling around the good old internet and in touch weekly, I don't know how they got this, but they got a spoiler alert alert, exclusive, you know, details from 90 Day Fiancé, and it's so annoying because that just means that In Touch Weekly and 90 Day Fiancé, they're buddy-buddy, and I'm not buddy-buddy with them, so for sure 90 Day Fiancé just told In Touch Weekly so they could kind of get some press out about the 90 Day Fiancé. A bunch of people do it. I hate that because they don't ever give me any freaking, you know, buddy-buddy spoiler kind of stuff, but they told In Touch Weekly, In Touch Weekly, thank you very much, share it with us that Julia is not pregnant. So two things real quick on this. Number one, we saw in this little sneak peek clip that, okay, like I said, she was like, you know, super sick. And then we also saw, I mean, we've been seeing all season her taking the test and she goes, well, does two lines mean she's pregnant? So I just figured, oh, she's probably pregnant. And like I said earlier, they're doing a bunch of God knows what together. So I figured, well, she's for sure pregnant. And then we saw that clip. So that was like, that, that clip we saw was a complete freaking lie. But then we even saw another clip of Brandon telling his mom that we we sat down. He was saying it all serious, this idiot. He goes, we, we sat down and we took the test. And then of course the mom and dad were like, no, no, no. It was some freaking soap opera. And then I guess now we can confirm though, Brandon's going to tell his parents that it was negative and they are not having a baby, which is just whew, probably the best thing those two could do right now. They are clearly in no financial position whatsoever. If they can't take care of themselves and they can't move out of their own parents' house or, you know, Brandon's parents' house, they have no business having a baby. And that was the funniest thing in the sneak peek clip I did see was Brandon was saying, you know, well, geez, you know, if I, I we can't afford to move out, he goes, this would just be awful. But it's like, well, Brandon, you already had a conversation with your mother about how you can typically prevent that happening, what you can do. And it's like, why don't you just freaking do it? If you if you agree that having a kid would be a god awful thing right now because you don't have any money, why not just do put, you know, you know, put some things in place to not have a baby. So Brandon, Julia, oh my God, I'm kind of relieved. They are not having a baby. I thought they were, but I was wrong. We can now confirm they are not having a baby. So comment below what you guys think of those two. And I would not be shocked though if you know I would not be shocked if, if they are probably in the close to near future going to be having a baby anytime soon because she's still here that's clear as day I believe and she's definitely still here they're still together and I and we saw them film this 90 fiance season a long time like oh, literally over a year ago now so a lot of stuff can happen in a year but definitely make sure to comment below and before I go on to the rest of 90 fiance drama for today let me just say real quick if you are new to this channel please hit the follow or subscribe button below this video I know I say it almost every video but please you guys it helps me out so much and one thing I love even more than a follow or subscribe button is a share button. And if you have not already shared this video, especially on Facebook, please hit that share button. It means the world. If you share the video with a friend, a stranger, a loved one, it means the world to me. I love you guys so much. Now let's go back to the rest of this good old 90 fiance drama. So while we're on the topic of the sneak peek, the new episode, we got to see all the drama Brandon and Julia know they're not having a baby. We also get to see some pretty good drama with guess who? Number one, Rebecca and Zia. I'll keep this all real quick we can go on to the rest of the drama for today but we get to see Rebecca and Ziad supposedly Rebecca because Rebecca let me also say every two seconds she has to bring up this drama and what if this happens and what if this happens and what if that happens she's always bringing up these worst case scenarios so it sounds like she brings up to Ziad you know what if you want to have kids which that's probably a real possibility with his culture and he's a young man and I would not be shocked if he did want to have kids in the near future but he goes no 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 I wanted to have kids but now I don't and I I guess she's all concerned and she's always, you know, biting her nails and she's so nervous. What if he leaves? What if it's like, oh my God, if you're this nervous, if you're this concerned, don't marry the guy. But long story short, 
it definitely kind of sounds like they do end up stealing the deal, but more on them at a later time. And it looks like we actually get to see some pretty crazy stuff with Stephanie and Ryan. Now, if you did not already watch my interview with Stephanie, okay, watch it. Now, I usually, these 90 Fiance interviews, in my opinion, suck because they have an NDA. They can't say anything, but Stephanie, like, I mean, she said a lot of stuff. I hope to God she won't get in trouble. I don't think she really broke her NDA, I don't think. I really don't know. I haven't read it or anything, but she really said a lot of stuff that I have not heard on May 90 Fiance interview. So if you've not already watched the interview, I posted it a day or so ago, check it out. But we're gonna see them, and this is when it I possibly we're gonna see some really horrific things happen. If you guys don't know, I'm not gonna get into crazy detail in this video, but I'll just vaguely tell you guys, it sounds like Ryan did some really, really, really horrible things to Steph. She was sharing screenshots. She was basically saying it on social media. Uh, there, I mean, there's there, there a lot of different things coming out. She was, I think, sharing screenshots with one of Ryan's relatives that was agreeing. Like, there was a lot of proof behind it. And she has this horrible story, what Ryan did to her when she was in Bailey's, when they were filming. And, you know, Stephanie was kind of on, under the impression that they might totally sidestep it and not even mention what he did to her on the show. And she had pretty good reasoning because she was like, you know, he's going to be on Night Day Bears All. And, I mean, come on. It, what, what he did to her, you shouldn't allow this guy to be on this show. And that's just the truth. He really should not be allowed on this show if everything went down, you know, like she says. And, and she's positive and confident. And it sounds like there's even a possibility that she might even, like, legally do something against him for what he did. So, it's a messy situation. But like I said, she was been saying, she even said in the interview... They're probably going to sidestep the whole thing. We don't know if she's going to, if they're going to mention it or if they're going to cut that whole thing out. But it does look like we do get to see the fight with Stephanie and Ryan. And what Ryan did to her that was god awful and horrible, that's what caused the fight. So maybe we're going to see everything. I'm curious to see how Nighty Fiance is going to spin this one because it's kind of like you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't show that Ryan did some horrifically horrible thing and keep him on Nighty Bears All. I feel like that's kind of like a catch, what is it, catch 20? I don't even know. I'm a freaking moron. But yeah, you can't do that. So I feel like they're probably going to cut all that out. But I did see they were going to see a lot of fighting with them. And I just don't know how they're going to edit and spin this one because I don't think they're going to show the whole story. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But we are definitely going to see some of this gigantically crazy fight that I believe is just the end of, obviously, it's the end. It's, it's that's it for Stephanie and Ryan. That's the end of their relationship. And more than likely, if I had to guess, I don't know for sure. But if I had to guess, Stephanie probably jumps on a plane and goes back to good old Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh yeah, then we get to see, um, you know, Dumb and Dumber, Yara and Jovi, and they're doing what they do best. Now, now, now they're not doing it as good as maybe you'd say maybe Mike and Natalie, but they are still doing it pretty good, and that is fighting. They are fighting and fighting and fighting and good old fighting. They're constantly going at it and screaming, and it's starting to kind of wear on my mental state. I'm starting to kind of get really annoyed because they went to this party. It's what their engagement party, I guess, and of course Yara doesn't want to be there. Jovi is probably doing too much of this, and he doesn't want to tell his family that, you know, Yara's expecting a baby. And so they're fighting. They're going crazy. And that's probably the whole thing. And I think what honestly ends up happening is they end up just storming off and leaving the party. And that's it. And they have a fight and they wake up the next day. And Joby, I don't know, but I'm sure he probably, you know, buys her some, you know, new car or something. And she pretends to be all happy for about five seconds. So I'm not a fan of these two. I think they are very annoying. But that is about all I know. And then last but not least, we got to see Tariq and Hazel real quick. They're looking to get a third girlfriend. Fantastic. I feel like that's just, a, a, honestly, I feel like that's a god-awful idea because we have something in, you know, the English language called jealousy, and it's a very real thing, and I think they are going to get very jealous, and we saw it with their last girlfriend, Minty. That's exactly what happened. They both got jealous, so what do you think will happen this time around? So probably not the best idea, but they are searching for a new girlfriend, and while we are on the 90 Fiance topic, got a couple other little tidbits I do want to talk about. Number one, Paul and Karenny. I don't know if I've mentioned this on this video, but they took a video, like, a, the funny thing is, this video was taken a long time ago, long, long, long time ago, before the baby. Maybe it's how they actually made their baby, but anyway, it's a video of them doing God knows what, and guess what? They sold it on their OnlyFans for $100. And now, Paul is coming out on social media really freaking upset, and they're saying that they have to get a legal team involved because people on social media are actually sharing this video. Now, I don't know from who, but I actually saw like a second of this video, and I don't remember from who. I don't know how I saw 
saw it. So I can't, I probably can't be dragged. I know I was not sharing this video. I was not doing anything with it. I just, someone sent me like a, like a screen. It was a real quick, and the, the thing expired. It was like a real quick little two second snippet of it. So I saw it, unfortunately. It was kind of disturbing. But um, yeah, people are sh you're sharing it around and now Paul's sharing on social media, saying a long laundry list of stuff that they're gonna get a legal team involved, I guess, to, you know, I don't even know, try and I guess try to get these guys accounts shut down and maybe even get some money out of them because you can't share OnlyFans content. So he shared this saying, it's. It's depressing I had to find a lawyer to help my wife and other 90 Day Fiance cast begin lawsuits and prosecutions of people sharing and leaking OnlyFans info. We want to thank everyone who sent Karini and her family the images and videos for easier identification for our new legal team. And I don't know why, but he also was talking about they're going to be taking like, uh, you know, one of those tests to make sure he is the father. I don't know why. It's almost like we're kind of freaking going, what's that show? You know, it's like we're going to the freaking, it's like, it's like a soap opera now. Why? Just dude, okay, is, is this for attention or? Is this for what? What is the purpose of this? I mean, this is kind of getting ridiculous and kind of getting freaking annoying. So, yeah, I don't even know. No comment. Paul and Karenny, they are still on good old OnlyFans, and I guess they're going to be taking some tests pretty soon to make sure that Paul is the father. And we have one, actually, kind of two other 90 Day Fiancé things real quick. So before I get into the thing with Stephanie, real quick, let me say real quick, I did the interview with the other Stephanie, Stephanie and Rima, Stephanie from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I had a freaking blast. And I got just, in, uh, in, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything. I don't think it had anything to do with me. And let me also say, if you watch the interview, I was sick. I don't, if, I, people were coming at me saying, why are you so quiet? I was sick. I had a cold. I'm fine now, as you can tell. But at the time, I was extremely sick and we filmed it kind of late. So I was tired. Sorry. But anyway, I had a really good time and a bunch of people were still like, hey, it was fun. It was, they, they liked hearing the stuff from Stephanie. Not so much of me, but with Stephanie, it was interesting to hear. So long story short, I want to interview more 90 Fancy castmates. And I'm trying to riddle off a couple people. I mean, the, the, the truth is this. The cast mates that are buddy-buddy with 90 Day Fiance probably won't come on my channel. So the David and Anne, and if they do, they probably won't say jack crap because they have to say it on a 90 Day Fiance spinoff. Either they're filming for a new 90 Day Fiance show or they're going to say it on 90 Day Bears All or they just, they, just, they just won't share it. So like a David and Annie, well, they're buddy-buddy. Add, okay, Darcy, they're all buddy-buddy. Those kind of people, they're buddy-buddy. But people that kind of fell off, like you know who would be good he's not really huge but who'd be good is tim malcolm he would be good because i feel like he's kind of low-key he's kind of posting on his own social media and he's not really on 90 Day fiance anymore besides kind of pillow talk but i was initially kind of actually thinking caesar so my whole point of you asking this thing is if you guys have anyone you want me to try to interview like i said the ones that are buddy buddy with 90 Day fiance that probably ain't gonna be happening but the random ones the caesar probably larissa larissa would probably do it because she's totally off 90 Day fiance the people like that, maybe Devin, I don't even know if y'all really like her or not, but the people that are kind of random, I would honestly love to have Devin and her new man on this channel and just ask them, what is the deal? Give it, I don't know if they would or not, but I would say, give it to me straight, give me the deal, give me the rundown, because this whole relationship to me seems kind of fishy. But there are people like that that aren't really super tight in it with 90 Day Fiance, and they'd probably come on my channel. So if you know anyone, if you have anyone, if you want me to hear anyone, I was initially thinking Caesar. So I I think I'm going to start kind of bombarding him on social media. We have to get the guy's attention somehow, which I know that probably sounds funny, but I, he doesn't follow me. I, you know, I follow him, but I've been trying to get his attention. I'm going to keep doing so, but if y'all have anyone else, please let me know, and I am going to try to get their attention, and we could maybe try to get them on this channel for an interview. I thought the interview was really fun with Stephanie, and I would love to do many more, so make sure to comment below who you want to hear. And last but not least for the day, we kind of have a weird topic, and that is with actually the other Stephanie, not Stephanie and Ryan, but Stephanie and Erica. That's Stephanie right there. I still follow her on social media. I was in talks about actually having her on the channel. I wonder if I still could. I'm going to try to hit her up again, because she was pretty cool, and she does not like she was down to come on the channel, but I still follow her on social media, and oh my god, she's going through a very horrifically scary thing right now. She's mentioned it in the past with stalkers and things like that. People were trying to reach out to her saying some really scary stuff. And she just mentioned it again that, you know, she posted a profile this time of a guy. This is the first post right there saying this guy who's been, you know, harassing and stalking for two years now. I have tried to confront him to no avail. He has sent me dozens of disgusting and disturbing messages saying he watches me and knows where I live. Today, he drew the line by contacting my mother and neighbors. So that's his picture. She even went on again to say, you know, 
know this is his close family member. I have messaged them pleading to tell the family to stop, and my, my head management company reached out, but only to be blocked. And so she went on and on and on, saying they're from North Carolina, blah, blah, blah. Then she went on to share this right there, saying I never wanted it to come to this. I always gave this person a chance to stop and to leave me alone, and I would move along without making a mess of their life, but they had done to mine. But unfortunately, my graciousness has run out, and I refuse to sit by while this man makes every attempt to try to make me feel afraid or unsafe. No one deserves to live that way. And the family members who enabled this you know, criminal's behavior are complicit at this point. I don't care what, what I do on the internet or what my social media suggests. This is not okay. Today was the end of the line. I have had enough. And she went on to say, yes, the police are involved. And yes, there is an investigation. But legally, things move slowly. And I am done waiting around. For everyone concerned, I appreciate it. I have hired an on-site security and local PD patrol my street routinely. Still, this is too much for me to deal with anymore. I reached my breaking point when he messaged my family and neighbors saying horrible things. So, wow, um, oh my God, that is this really freaking scary. I feel bad for her. I hope she can, I honestly, you know, I hate to say it, but I think they should probably do something with him. He should not, I don't know what he's saying. It doesn't sound like it's anything good, but he should not be able to say stuff. Whatever he's doing, saying, uh, you know, uh, threatening to do, that's not cool, not good. They need to do something. And I said that the police are involved, but it's taking a long time, which that's just scary. Thankfully, she makes a crap ton of money, which I know no one wants to, but she can at least financially afford to hire security and stuff. But still, that's not cool, not good, really terrifyingly scary. And I posted the guy's picture at the beginning of when I started talking about this. I'll post it again. I mean, maybe if you know the guy, maybe reach out to Stephanie on social media, on Instagram, maybe, and say so. I don't know. I doubt anybody. If you're from North Carolina, maybe. I mean, it's probably so random. Anyone would ever know this guy. But if you do know the guy, Maybe reach out to her. Maybe you guys could help, help you know, do something. So really terrifyingly scary. I feel bad for her. And I might actually have her on my channel to talk about that. That'd be kind of interesting. So anyway, you guys, 90 Day Fiance, bunch of circulating drama, bunch of hilarious stuff, and kind of honestly some scary stuff. But either way, make sure to comment below. Make sure to hit the follow button. Make sure to hit the like button. Tonight, guys, we have a new episode of Love After Lockup. I am so excited on WeTV at 8 yeah, central time. Yes, 8 central time. So definitely, y'all, better stay tuned. Well, guys, thank you all so much for watching, and y'all better stay tuned for many more videos.